Welcome to the Without the H podcast. I'm Sarah. That's Without the H. Um, that little peanut jumping down is my co-host Frank. We'll meet him, probably meet him a little later. Um, this is a knitting podcast that'll hopefully branch off into some sewing and cross-stitching in the future. But as for now, it's just knitting and we're coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri. Yay! Uh, you can find me on Ravelry as Sarah C831. Again, that's without the H. <laughs> Sarah C831. And um, I don't Instagram. I guess you can find me on Facebook, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll link I'll link my my Ravelry. But other than that, I'm not really a social media. But I might get into Instagram. Um, started to do this podcast. I'm like so excited. I've been watching so many podcasts and I really picked up the knitting bug like for real. Maybe like, well, this is September, so like nine months ago. And I'm just obsessed and I've been watching so many podcasts and I just love this community and love to be a part and I just want to be a part of it. Um, St. Louis isn't a big knitting community. Like we only have like two yarn shops. Other than like Michaels, so you know I, I want to want to see what's out there, and I would love to meet you. This is Frank. He's the co-host. So about me, I um 22 years old. I'm a bartender slash server. So that's what I do. My so when I'm not working, I am knitting. Like I am obsessive knitter. I learned it about 10 years ago when I was 12 years old. My mom took me to one of our local yarn shops and I took some knitting classes where I learned how to knit and purl and all that. My mom was a crocheter, which I did learn how to crochet. I can't say I remember it now, but I don't know. Knitting was where it's at. I like, I just like the look of knitting better and the process and just, I just love knitting. So I learned when I was 12 years old. By making, you know, the basics like scarves and knits and pearls and nothing more than that. Sorry, I gotta have my Starbucks. It's my life force. <laughs> and I did all that and I loved it. And I was doing, you know, short scarves with chunky yarn and they went by quickly and I loved it. Um, so I did that and then I decided I was gonna go big or go home and make this giant queen size blanket, which actually you know would have been pretty but it was huge it was like a queen size that you show like knit in strips and sew up and so I never finished it I was 12 years old it was like my fifth project <laughs> and I didn't realize how long knitting took so I was still using like the hair and white yarn the super thick and chunky but it just it still took forever so and I can't believe my instructor like sent this newbie beginner off to make a blanket. So I put it down and then I also was 12 years old, you know, I wanted to go young teenagers, you wanted to go hang out with your friends and, you know, do all that, involve the school activities. Knitting didn't seem very cool to me and, you know, at that age I just wanted to be cool. <laughs> so I put that down and I picked knitting up again about five years later. The boy, uh, my boyfriend at the time wanted a scarf and I was like, I'm going to knit you a scarf because, you know, I, for some reason I wanted to pick knitting back up again and it seemed like the way into it. So he picked out his colors and I made him a scarf and he was like super knit worthy and his cousin wanted one too and he was super knit worthy. Frank, knock it off. <laughs> and it's like so I got like still into knitting but um more gift knitting so I was like knitting like scarves and hats and all that for other people which you know taught me how to knit on the round I learned um you know I learned lace doing that I kind of built on what I learned from these knitting classes with YouTube videos so I learned how to like you know decreases and increases and all all the good stuff all the little technical things which I'm still learning I'm sure we all are so I did that and then I decided I was gonna make another blanket my covert worker was having a baby and this was her oh hold on sorry <sighs> sorry phone call 
<laughs> okay, so back to what I was saying. So during my, my gift knitting streak, I was knitting and decided to knit another blanket, which obviously took forever. And I put, ended up putting that down. I didn't want to finish it. And then, like, I went off to Hawaii for two months. I didn't bring any of my knitting with me because I was afraid, like, TSA was going to take my needles. So I put knitting down for about another year. And I picked it up. Actually, maybe longer than that. Cause I, and then like I dabbled, like I did like a few little things, but it was never like anything serious. And then I picked it up like for good. Like me and knitting were like on an on again, off again relationship. Just we loved each other, but we just always didn't get along. <laughs> and then it was in March. Uh, I got jumped on the carrot cakes bandwagon. And because I just loved all the colors. I'm sure you know what Karen cakes are. It's a huge cake of yarn. It's a wool acrylic blend. And it's like long, like long self, long color book self-striping. So I jumped on that. And that's when me and, like, me and knitting, we decided to settle down. We got engaged. We said I loved you. And we are just in it for the long haul. Because I learned to love it. Um, so I picked it up again with the Karen with the Karen cake. I just loved the colors. And as if this podcast goes on and you watch, I'm sure you'll see more of my Karen cake because now I have a whole collection that I don't know what to do with. But I made I set it up with this blanket here. This is the Karen Cakes um rainbow sherbet colorway which you know after all those instances of me like putting down blankets i just said i was gonna knit another blanket but this one oh i guess maybe it was the color changes and just the prettiness of it and i also i was moving at the time so i wanted like a blanket to go in my apartment which i think it matches this couch pretty good what do you what do you think <laughs> so this is what really started the relationship and you know Monogamously knitted on this. Took me about two months. Oh, this is the Cake Pop Rainbow Sherbert colorway, which ugh, I don't know if this camera's doing it justice, but I love it. I love, like, this bright orange and the blues, and there's this chartreuse color, and then pink. Who doesn't like pink? And I just, I was going to do, like, you know, the corner-to-corner -corner, corner blanket, the like grandma's favorite dishcloth. I got to the point, I was like, you know what, I want to make it rectangular. So I did some thinking about it, and I figured out that if you kept increasing on one side, but decreasing on the other side, you'll get a rectangle. And then, you know, you hit it as long as you want, and then you do decrease it on both sides to make the corner. So it was this corner to this corner. I still need to weave in the ends, but, you know, it's just been sitting on the couch and the ends are hidden, but I still need to weave them in. But after this, I really just, like, got into knitting because I was just so happy with my outcome. And I love this blanket. I love the colors. And so with that, we'll get into finished objects, which, you know, just, you never seen me before. This is probably the most amount of finished objects I've ever seen, but I wanted to gather and just show you, show you a little bit about myself. Another thing about this podcast that I want is, you know, because I am, you know, just learning. I'm going to steal as a Bernadette from the Wet Coast Bulls podcast. Hi, Bernadette. Hi, Linda. <laughs> uh, I used to call herself a baby knitter. So I feel like I'm a baby knitter going through puberty right now. So I'm very much learning, but I want to see my progress and see what I learn and see how it goes. So I put this up. Frank's curled up on my lap, which is good. So you will see a lot of Frank. He is like attached at the hip to me. I'm sorry about my butt. I'm going to put this back. So the next Karen Cakes finish object is This is the Unbroken Yarn by Mare Stevens. 
And, okay, I should not have used Karen cakes standing because, like, the stripes are just so wonky. I thought it was going to look cool. But I wanted to, and if you go on my Ravelry, you see this is the, my breakup card again. I, when I was dating a guy that I really liked, and we broke up, and I wanted to do something to distract me. So I was like, I'm going to knit a sweater. I, you know, which is intimidating. This is the first one I ever knit, and, and I don't have, like, good, um, I'll try it on for you. Which, I mean, for the stripes, like. I like it, but I didn't have good circulars. I have, like, the, the Boyd interchangeable set, which I'm sure everyone knows the cable just sucks. So, like, I didn't, like, want something to end around, so I went on Ravelry, and I googled, um, the flat, like, a flat knitted sweater, and I found this, which I fucking love. You should get on it. I totally love it. It's all garter and just stuff, and that sleeves with little garter cuffs. And it really, like, boosted my confidence up. Like, this was so, I mean, it was easy. It was so easy to make. And I love it. Like, you know, I hate the color. Like, I'm probably going to frog this, but I do definitely want to make this in, again, in the solid color. I'm going to insert a picture of her pattern because mine does not do it justice. But it is so cute. And I love it. And, like, you know, I'm just boosting my confidence. I'm going to take this off because it is a warm September day, I don't want to wear it, and it, can't wear, can't wear sweaters, what are you doing, Frank? So this is, um, Mary Stevens, I used another Karen Cakes in the Cake Pop colorway, sorry if I'm being redundant, I'm still nervous because <laughs> this is my first episode, but so, you know, and this one, you know, definitely did not take nearly as long as the blanket, it probably took me, like, two, three weeks in at this, and I just love it, so from there, it has just, you know, been taking off, I knit this, I knit my sweater, after that, we have, oh wait, I don't know if this is gonna do it, this is, uh, right here, Knit Your Love, by Martina Bim. I'm sure you know of her. She does the hitchhike, Hitchhiker's Cardigan. Oh my goodness. So you see this? This yarn is like a Michaels yarn that I had in my stash. It's like Payette. Oh, I had a little fuzzy. This is Payette. And the mirror colorway. Sorry about the lighting, guys. I'm going to see if I can fix this editing. But, you know, I don't... Frank, don't eat my knitting. But next episode, I'm going to get a lamp. We're going to we're gonna do this better. Anyways, this is... So this is like, you know, movie knitters. The word shawl. Like, I'm 22 years old. What am I going to do with a shawl? And then, like, I looked it up. And then I found this. And it just kind of, you know, it just spoke to me. Because I... Do you love this yarn? It's super sparkly, which is me. I do love this yarn. I was like, oh my god, with the hearts, it's perfect because it's just so sweet and cute. And oh, I can't wait till it gets cold out. And it's just like it's a little shawl, super small. I'll probably knit this again and make it like a little bigger. But this is it. And um love it a finished objects and I got one more finished objects <laughs> save some for later on if I have just like random ones sitting around my house but and this one is my most recent finished object and it is my first pair of socks which I don't have sock pluckers so they look kind of crappy but this I followed Alice Yu's Totally Vanilla Sock Recipe in the book Soctopus, which I have right here. I don't know if you ever heard of Soctopus, but especially me, someone to like learning, like, she goes through and tells you exactly how to calculate how many stitches you need and how long to knit it, and it is so cute. Like, I love, so 17 pairs. You should totally look at this book. The patterns are just beautiful. 
pictures and show you. And her pictures are great. Sorry, <laughs> I can get distracted. But so I made these. I knit them in tandem because I saw on the I saw multiple packets people knitting in tandem to kind of avoid second sock syndrome, which you know with my blanket history, I don't think I'm immune. And I did this in the Patton's Croy Route 66 colorway, which, you know, it's cute. Um, I'm pretty proud of myself. It was pretty easier, easy. So I don't know anything. I followed, I followed her sock vanilla recipe. So I did her heel and her toe and just, you know, did a two by two rib. I think I cast it on 62 stitches and did a one millimeter needle. And then I came down, and then I did make a boo-boo, because this toe, I don't know if you can see, <laughs> is a lot more narrower than the other. Which I honestly, like, this toe, like, I did the kitchener too soon on one toe, because, you know, I just wasn't paying attention, but whatever. It doesn't really make a difference. I don't care. And, you know, it's no problem. Can't wait to cast on another pair of socks. The only thing about this, I've followed her I followed her instructions on the link to make it with negative ease and all that but I'm still just like a tad too short and like I guess I could go back and rip out the toe and redo it but I'm kind of thinking you know it's September Christmas is coming up I'm sure these will fit my grandma perfectly fit her just a little bit smaller than mine and she would definitely appreciate these but you know I got, I got the practice I got the basics down I'm realize I don't like knitting in tandem is such a good idea like you do the rib here you do the rib there and then an inch and then an inch do the heel flap you know so easy but my first pair of socks yay and I think that completes my works in project process finish objects finish up sorry guys you're gonna have to bear with me I you know I have to get in the routine more coffee more coffee even though it is like 2 p.m on a tuesday it's my day off of work i need coffee 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 so with that we'll come into my works in progress <laughs> sorry so works in progress first off we have this is like I am in love with this pattern. This is Miso. The Miso Shaw by Amba O'Brien. I don't know if you can see. My printer was running out of ink. So it's just like a simple, um, simple little shawlette with a zigzag lace pattern. Oh my god, I love it. So I'm almost to the point, I got one more increase section, and I'm going to do my decreases. I love it! So this yarn, this is one of my first experiences with real wool yarn, indie hand dyeing. The yarn is, um, here's, I don't have a swifter, any of that stuff, so I hand wound it. Oh, isn't it pretty? This is Once Upon a Corgi Yarn um, on her ginger base, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% Gold Stellina. Gold. Fancy. And this is a potluck color, and it's called Drogon, which I was watching her po podcast, and she showed this on one of her updates, and I just had to have it. I don't know if you understand, Drogon is a Game of Thrones reference, so, you know, and I'm a Game of Thrones addict, so, oh my god, I freaking love it. Frank, come here. Sorry, I don't know what the dog's doing. What are you doing? Come here. 
and oh my god i love knitting with real world all my years of acrylic knitting like i've been lying to myself like look at the drape and it's so soft and like i get great oh, i can't wait to block this but i just love this so it's the drogon colorway which is you know it's got these little pops of bright orange and pops of red and some you know grays and greens the black main color this is gonna be mine oh my god i love it so i'm about halfway done with this and it's going by so fast like it's such an enjoyable knit i love it i'm doing the one skein version uh the miso pattern you can do a one or two skein version just by she gives you instructions you just how many you just do more increases and decreases to make it a little bit wider and longer which i would love to do a two skin version but i saw this colorway on gabby's podcast the once upon a corgi podcast and i just had to have it i've been eyeing gabby's yarn forever and this one just called my name so i went on and bought it i got it super quickly i was thinking what am i gonna make with this and I was Ravelry researching and I found this and I was like, that is it? You know, it spoke to me. So that's what I'm knitting. I got this in. This is my first project bag. Wait, do you see what my project bags are? <laughs> but this is my pineapples. Because I said I went to Hawaii a couple of years ago. Sorry, I got a hair. I'm obsessed with all things Hawaii and pineapples. Or what's more Hawaii than pineapples? And then the interior is anchors it's so cute it's just a little sock size bad by uh molly klein designs on etsy oh my god i need more project bags which is why i said at the beginning i want to like learn to sew i really want to get a sewing machine and just make a bunch of project bags because you'll see with this next pattern with this next uh, whip why well, I use this project bags hold on one second let me reach over so this is my project bag just an old Victoria's Secret bag because I have a collection but I feel like it works well they stand up on their own and they're easy to carry it's not like I'm bringing this to the park to go knitting like no <laughs> But this one is me trying to use up some of that Karen cakes. This is the cake pop colorway that we saw in my cardigan. And I'm making the Guernsey wrap. Love, love, love. I love it. It's just, um, I made it. I only did cast on 46 inches instead of the 58 recommended because I wanted it to be more scarf-like. So this is gonna be a scarf from my mom for Christmas. Um, I decided to cast this on. I was gonna make her that Wonder Woman wrap because my mom's Wonder Woman incest, obsessed. <laughs> not incest, obsessed. My mom is not incest. We're not, we're not that kind of family. That's not what happens here in St. Louis. <laughs> but so I just wanted, I was gonna make her that Wonder Woman the wrap but I was having just problems finding the yarn I wanted I wanted to do my mom I wanted to do it out of acrylic because my mom's not one to like hand wash stuff like she'll appreciate when I make her but she's not going to take the time to hand wash it and worry about that so I wanted something like if it gets dirty I just throw it in the washing machine and I like this cake pop colorway for her because my mom is you know it's her color palette she's <laughs> My mom is like just a jeans and t-shirts kind of gal and all this. But I think she's really going to like this. And I do really love this pattern. Like, I did this in two nights, which is awesome. So, this, um, it's just a texture. So, it's just like, you know, knits and pearls to make different textures. And it makes it go by so fast because it's like... As soon as you start getting bored with one, you pick up and you do it. You like you change it and you do another. So I'm doing the Karen. This is what I'm doing. Oh, you know what I haven't been doing is mentioning needle sizes. Is this relevant? So I guess I should. I'm doing a size eight. 
Chiaogu, Chiaogu, how do you say it? How do you say it? Somebody told me how to say it. Which, after using that void interchangeable, that, I know everyone hates the cables suck. <laughs> um, I saw a lot of good reviews about this Chiago, and I picked them up, and I love them. I love the tips. I love the cable, like, it's a really good cable, like, no memory. I've tried to go back and use, like, my Boyd knitting needles, and I just can't. Like, I'm spoiled now, like, I can't. I need those. So, yeah, size 8 Chiagos. My Mesa was a size 5 of the same one I have managed to collect the Chiagos in every size now because I freaking love them. They're so nice to use. I have heard other things about people really like Addies and Haya Haya, so I'd like to try them, but right now, Chiagos, and, like, they're affordable. You can get them on Amazon for, like, I don't know, less than $10 and free to my front door in two days, so I love them. I would probably try, like, the Addy Lace and, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And hi hiya's and try other things. Comment and let me know what other needles. Like what what is your favorite needle to use? So but Chagos have won my heart and definitely like good tools make you love your craft more. So I love knitting so much more because I it's easier. It's easier with a good needle and a good cable. Alright. And on to my third and final whip, which this is kind of a joke whip, but I'm going to show you anyway, because like, I've been knitting serious for nine months, and I don't feel like I have enough to show for it, but whatever. So this is, this is so embarrassing. So this is the front of a Cancun boxy lace top. Which, as you can see, it's not a top as, like, oh, it's super cropped. But I'm knitting it. I'm knitting this out of, I don't know if you can see, this is Blue Heron's Rayon Metallic. It's a double knit yarn, DK yarn, in the pumpkin pie colorway. And I saw this at one of my local knitting store on like my first trip to like a real knitting store. And oh my, and I just, I just fell in love. Like I love this Capri color. It's not, you know, my normal color palette, but with the shine and the shimmer. And I saw this pattern and I was thinking I didn't, but I was thinking for some reason I was going to go down a needle size. This was after my uh, cardigan, I didn't swatch for my cardigan because, I mean, this is basically a big gauge swatch. So this one, I didn't swatch for this, and I went down a needle size, which is why it's so freaking short. But I'll show you the yarn and the cake. I still love the yarn, so I'm going to have to redo that. I have to redo it. I don't know. I think I'm just going to rip it out and do something else. But this is so pretty. And it's a rayon. Yeah, it's just pure rayon. Here's the card. And that's it. It doesn't say anything else. It's just rayon. Rayon and metallic. Hmm. doesn't say on here. Which I love. It has, like, such a nice straight to it. And it's so soft. But we're going to have to rip this out and make something else. But this is, you know, a frog foot. I'm thinking about making another, like, summery top. I'm going back to Hawaii this December. So this was, like, what do you like as a beach top? Which, you know, because it's always nice in Hawaii. So I was thinking I'm going to rip that out and make the bow crazy chevron lace open back tank top with bow <laughs> long title by lauren Riker. i'll insert a picture here i think that uses i don't know i 
think I want to say the yarn is like sport weight for this, and this um rayon's a DK, but I think it'll be. I'll figure out figure out how to change it up. Oh, come here, Frank. But I think that would be really cute, and just, I like that back detail. So that's something I want to learn how to do. So that's like my that's my joke whip. So I did knit it. I knit it on, the pattern recommends a size 8 needles, and I think I knit it on a size 7, and they were just like straight bamboo needles by probably like clovers. Sorry, I don't know where the needles are, which I learned the importance of gauge swapping, because that's why it's so short. And I wanted to, I tried to do it like on the size 8 cable needles, but I was having a problem with the uh, drop stitch sex section that you couldn't get them over the cable join so I just I was like okay I'm gonna do it on straights and I didn't have any long enough eight US 8 straights so I knitted on the US 7s and that's that's my <laughs> joke but I do love it but so we're gonna rip that out and we're gonna redo it but i love that yarn and i love the colorway and i think it's gonna make a perfect little like summer top lightweight perfect so that's whips oh and it's in victoria's secret bag as well i'm so classy send me project bags i'm just kidding don't send me i'm i need to buy some i need to get some money collected up to buy some project bags but i keep spending it all on yarn so we have um, acquisitions. This. Oh my goodness. I guess I gotta get used to that she be small. It smells like feet to me. <laughs> but this is Tannis Fiber Arts. Oh, where's the label? Tannis Fiber Arts and her tartan colorway. Oh my gosh. Love, love, love. It's kind of, it's got reds and Teely blues, browns, purples, shard, crucy greens. I love it. I've been stalking Tannis's rabble. Uh, it's like came across Tannis's website. I'm stalking all her colors and saw her podcast and just you know fell in love and had to try her yarn. But I discovered this brother on vacation, so I spent a whole month waiting for them to come back. I also got a uh, prism by her, which is like a grayish purple with some tealy blues, some chartreuse. You can see a lot of that chartreuse. She's just so pretty. So I was stalking her and then when they finally came back, I'm like, these are the colors that I want. My plan for these is more gift knitting. I've been bad about uh, knitting Christmas presents lately. So, I've been bad at knitting, like giving Christmas presents. I don't, I don't know why. So I bought these because I want to make little like one skein shawlettes for each of my grandmas for Christmas. So this one's gonna be Grandma Kathy, and I'm thinking about doing I'll insert pictures the Easy by Martina Bim. I love that and it just seems, seems this color is grandma kathy and that seems more like her because it is more like a scarf than a shawl but then construction is interesting because you like you knit half of it and then it creates this diagonal and then you do the other half you pick up stitches so it changes stitch orientation and kind of shows off the yarn really well and that's tartan and then with grandma connie I would, it's prism, the purples and stuff that's her. I was thinking maybe like a close to you. And I also just had the idea maybe we can just make them misos and I can be wearing my miso that I made and be like, I knit you a matching scarf, Grandma. And we can just all be like the miso gang. I, so I'm trying to decide on what I want to do. But these are on Tannis's Blue Label Fingering Weight, which is 80% Superwash Merino and 20% nylon it's a 115 gram skein so a bigger skein and oh my god love it love it love it love it so this is like 
you know, still my new experiences with wool yarn. Well, it's so soft. And it does got that smell to it. But I can't wait. I need to get a Swift, though, so I can, like, wind these. Because I like when you go to the yarn shop and they cake it for you. And I don't have... I, I, I wind them by hand at home. I make a friend, like, you sit here like this. Hold this skein open and I'm going to wind in the ball. So that's just what it is. But hopefully I don't want to cast these on type in my me so because that's just how it is and I'm still deciding I'm still deciding on what I want to knit so we're gonna we're gonna figure that out and another acquisition I literally just got this like right before I started filming it's a little sock bag this one's from Bent Needle Designs. It is, it's super tiny. It's smaller than I thought it was going to be, but I still love it. She's got, it's almost like, it's a very thick, squishy interfacing. Like, the bag is so soft. And I bought this Impulse Buy because I love the print. I'm a very nature-y kind of girl, so I love, like, the rainforest and the tigers. Like, I'm nature-obsessed. So, I don't know if I showed you the bag. I'm just inside. But two project bags. So this one, I'm gonna cast on some socks soon. And use, I got a bag to put it in. You know, we're slowly gonna get rid of all the Victoria's Secret bags. Cause, you know, maybe <laughs> it's about time. It's time to grow up. Get, get some real project bags, Sarah. And then, so the other end, I think that's, uh, that's about it. So we got, we got my foes, we got my whips, you met Frank, met me, and that's all I have to, that's all I have to say. Oh, 37 minutes, so I think I did pretty good. So I'm just going to finish it up with this um thank you for watching i am so excited to join this podcasting community i love watching all these podcasts and sorry if this was a bit disheveled and messed up i'm still trying you know learn learn as i go but i think it's gonna be if all else fails it's gonna be fun for me to watch myself progress and learn more and learn about yarn, learn about, learn how to make different things and all that. And I'm just so excited and I can't wait. I'm so excited to be part of this community. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. Um, I think I'm probably going to do this. I don't know how often I'm going to do this, either weekly or bi-weekly. I think, we'll see. We'll see. I'm thinking maybe bi-weekly just because you know, more progress, more stuff to show, more time for me to collect yarn to show you and all that. So that's just what we're going to do. Um, so thank you. Happy knitting. Um, uh, thank you. Happy knitting. All my show notes are going to be down there and maybe we'll see where we go from here. Thank you so much. Bye.